Hi, and welcome to the Digital Digging YouTube channel. In this video, I'm continuing with the future of the aviation and tech trees in War Thunder, and this time it's America's turn. They have a large number of aircraft joining the lineup, so I'm splitting this one into at least two parts. Right, well, starting with the P-40s, we can expect the P-40B, C, K, and the P-40N. The P-40 starts and continues life undergoing a bewildering variety of name changes and modifications, depending on which country is doing what with it. So if there are any errors in the following, I apologise in advance. The P-40B was equipped with an Allison V1710-C33 engine, which gave it a maximum speed of 320 miles per hour or 566 kilometers per hour. It had four 7.62mm wing-mounted Browning machine guns and two 12.7mm machine guns mounted on the nose. The almost identical P-40C had added bomb shackles, self-sealing fuel tanks and a number of other modifications, the weight of which had an adverse effect on the handling of the aircraft. Then we have the P-40K, which was fitted with the more powerful Allison V-1710-73 and brought the top speed up to 362 miles per hour at 15,000 feet or 582 kph at 4,572 meters. And finally we have the N, which was constructed around a much more lightweight frame and in an effort to shed more weight actually lost two of its guns, reducing its armaments to four 7.62mm machine guns. It was due to be fitted with Merlin engines built under license by Packard, but these were in short supply and the P40N received Allison V-1710-81s instead, providing it with a top speed of 378 miles per hour or 608 kph. These are not bad all-round low-tier aircraft, but in the game, as in real life, they suffer at altitude against some of their European contemporaries. Right, onto the Lightnings. We have the P-38E, the P-38F, the P-38J and the P-38L. The P-38E is recognised as the first true combat variant of the line and came with a single Hispano 20mm cannon and four 12.7mm machine guns with 500 rounds per gun, all mounted in the nose. The twin 1150 horsepower Allison V-1710-27 liquid-cooled engines provided it with a top speed of 390 miles per hour or 627 kph. The P-38F had the more powerful 1,225 horsepower Allison engines fitted along with underwing pylons which could be fitted with drop tanks carrying 165 gallons of extra fuel or a 1,000 pound bomb each. That's a little over 453 kilos. The J was generally considered to be the ultimate P-38 variant. One of the most welcomed modifications was the dive recovery flap. Because the Lightning could reach such high speeds in a dive, the wings suffered from what's known as compression and lost all lift. In early encounters, German pilots would lure P-38s into a fast dive from which they could easily pull out, but which often proved fatal for the P-38 pilot, as they suddenly found themselves piloting a beautifully streamlined, fast but utterly uncontrollable aircraft. The recovery flaps, as the name suggests, overcame this fault. Along with another increase in power to twin 1,425 horsepower Allison engines, which provided the P-38J with a top speed of 440 miles per hour or 666 kph, there were also adjustments to the flight controls and the bomb load was increased to 4,000 pounds or a whisker over 1,814 kilos. The L was very similar to the J and received yet another power boost in the form of twin 1600 horsepower Allison V-1710-F30R and F30L engines, and it could carry 10 rockets in underwing mounted arrangements known as tree launches. When these aircraft were first included in War Thunder, seeing one on the opposite team was more or less an invitation to go and shoot it down. When I unlocked it, I avoided buying it for a good while based on how easy it was to destroy them, but then I tried my luck on a whim and found that the flight model had been altered, and it was in fact a great fun flyer with a devastating punch. If you haven't given one of these a go yet, I highly recommend taking one out for a spin. We go from the Lightning to the Lancer. Introduced in 1941, the Republic P-43 Lancer was very much the predecessor to the P-47 Thunderbolt. It was also somewhat of a victim of the hugely accelerated arms race that took place in the late 30s and early 1940s. Although the United States Air Corps originally ordered 907 of these aircraft, the forthcoming P-47 proved to be far more attractive and the bulk of the order was cancelled. Out of the 272 of the Lancers that were built, some 125 of these aircraft went off to China as part of a Lend-Lease deal. 
and these remained in service until 1944. The Lancer was powered by a Pratt & Whitney R-1830 engine which generated 1,200 horsepower and a maximum speed of 356 miles per hour or 451 kph. It was armed with four 12.7mm M2 Browning machine guns and a variant could also carry six 20 pound or 9 kilogram bombs. There's a new Thunderbolt for the lineup, this time it's the P47D-15, which will be the earliest P47 variant when it arrives in the game. The chief differences in this version was the addition of drop tanks and an increased internal fuel capacity for long-range operations. The drop tanks were fitted to underwing pylons which could also accept bombs, increasing the maximum bomb load to 2,500 pounds or 1,130 kilos. Other armaments included 10 5-inch or 127mm unguided rockets and 8 12.7mm M2 Browning machine guns. There are three more P-51s on the way, or four if you count the F-82B. These are the 51B, the 51C and the 51H. The 51B was the first production Mustang to be fitted with a Rolls-Royce Merlin engine instead of the Allison V-1710-81. Built under licence by Packard, this improved power plant saw the top speed rise from 390 miles per hour at 20,000 feet to 439 miles per hour at 25,000 feet, and the service ceiling rise from 31,350 feet to 41,800 feet. That's to say that the top speed raised from 627 kph at 6096 meters to 706 kph at 7620 meters and the service ceiling rose from 9555 meters to 12740 meters. It came with four 12.9 mm Browning machine guns with 1260 rounds of ammunition and could carry a bomb load of 1000 pounds or 453 kilos. The P-51C is, as far as I can tell, identical to the P-51B, with the only detectable reason for a letter bump being that the Cs were built in Dallas, Texas instead of Inglewood, California. If this is the case, it essentially means you can take two into a match, which can't be a bad thing. The P-51H represents a major shift in the P-51 design and was also the final production Mustang to be built. The fuselage was deeper and longer and the tail fin height was increased, it was also lighter than previous models. Although 2000 were initially ordered, the war ended before the order was complete and just 555 were delivered. Some of these were issued to operational units, though they never saw any action. The upgraded and supercharged Packard V-1650, still a Rolls-Royce Merlin produced under licence, allowed the P-51H to reach a top speed of 487 miles per hour at 25,000 feet or 783 kph at 7,620 metres, making it one of the fastest piston engine fighters of the Second World War. It was armed with six 12.9mm Browning machine guns with 1,300 rounds and could carry up to 2,000 pounds or 907 kilos of bombs or up to 10 unguided rockets. We also have a pair of Black Widows incoming, the P61B and P61C. I think these are going to be very popular choices on looks alone, but the P61, or Black Widow as it was known, also packed a punch carrying four 20mm Hispano cannon with 200 rounds each and four 12.7mm Browning machine guns with 560 rounds each. It was also the first operational American night fighter specifically designed to use radar. The P-61B carried a 1,000 pound or 453 kilo bomb load or six unguided HVAR rockets and was powered by a pair of 2,000 horsepower Pratt & Whitney double wasp 18 cylinder radial engines which gave it a top speed of 365 miles per hour or 589 kilometers per hour. Though a heavy looking thing, the Black Widow proved itself to be an agile creature, surprising and destroying a good number of smaller fighters in combat. It'll be interesting to see how one of these performs against the Mosquito FB Mark VI. The P61C was a high performance variant of the P61B and came equipped with perforated air brakes for added maneuverability, both for air to air combat and ground strikes. Unfortunately, it arrived a little too late in the war to see any combat, and as far as I know, only 41 of these aircraft were completed and delivered. Now we have our second twin Mustang with the F-82B joining the F-82E already in the game. And this came with a pair of Packard V-1650s generating 1,380 horsepower, which gave the F-82B a top speed of 482 miles per hour or 775 kph. It sported six machine guns, could carry 25 5-inch or 12.7 centimeter rockets, or a bomb load of up to 4,000 pounds or 1,814 kilograms. 
Only 20 of these were built and on the 27th and 28th of February 1947 the F-82B Betty Jo managed to fly non-stop from Hawaii to New York which is a distance of 5,051 miles or 8,128 kilometers. This remains the longest non-stop flight by a prop-driven fighter to this day. If you're wondering how an aircraft with a range of 2,200 miles or 3,540 kilometers managed this feat, it's because it was performed by a single pilot whose plane now residing at the National Museum of the United States Air Force, was adapted to carry a much greater volume of fuel than standard. As it was, the pilot, Colonel Robert E. Thacker, forgot to drop three of his external tanks and carried them all the way to New York. The journey took him 14 hours and 32 minutes. We're on to the last of this batch now with the F-84C Thunderjet. It was the follow-on from the F-84B which we have in the game and, as you'd expect, the specifications are very similar. The chief difference being that the F-84C shipped the Allison J-35-A13 instead of the newer J-35-A15 found in the F-84B. It was an older model but the fuel system was apparently much more suited to the aircraft and the thrust rating of 4,000 pounds was identical and gave it a top speed of 622 miles per hour or 1,000 kilometers per hour. In terms of armaments, it carried the same six 12.7mm M3 Browning machine guns with 300 rounds apiece and up to 4,000 pounds or 1,814 kilograms of assorted external ordnance. Right, well, that's it for part one of the American Fighters. Part two should be up very soon. I'm, I'm not sure if I'm going to pack all the rest into part two. Uh, if not, then there'll be uh, part three as well. I'll then get on with the Japanese forces as promised and it's another big one, so that'll probably be in more than one part as well. Okay, well, if you've enjoyed this, then please hit the like button. It really helps the channel. And if you're not subscribed, then here's a perfect opportunity to remedy the situation. It's completely free and you'll be alerted to any new videos I upload. Okay, well, thanks for watching. Hope to see you next time. Bye-bye.